Hi guys, so welcome to episode three of Sex Weights and Protein Shakes with me and my co-host, Mr. Zach Khan. Yes, yes guys, how's it going? We've also got a very special guest on today, a legend in British bodybuilding alongside Zach. It's the one, the only, Mr. John Hodgson. Hi. Feeding me face, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, John's still at it. He doesn't miss his meals. Guys, if you're going to learn something, learn it from the veteran. This is it, mate. You know, I'm still consistent with what I do. Um, I'm obviously not, not eating as much as I do, but it's still that format of eating clean and training. Yeah, because uh, I saw a picture the other day, John, with Charlie uh, from Autoflip. He's still looking ripped, man, you know? I, I always maintain that look where I can always see me abs. And, and, yeah, so, you know, it's so just a healthy look. Yeah, how much is your body fat at the moment? Oh, no idea, to be honest with you. Probably, would, I wouldn't like to say. Uh, come, on. come off it. I don't really know. I honestly don't know. I don't he really knows. Know he knows. Come on, you know exactly no, what I it is. I actually don't, because for me, it's like, if I look in the mirror and I'm looking sexy, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is, John, like, now then, because you're retired and everything, like, how, how often do you train now? Like, how? I, I, I honestly literally... Train however I feel like it. So, you know, I tend to do maybe four workouts, stroke five workouts. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I can train, I train usually back on one day. And then the next day I'm doing like, I think, right, I can't be bothered training arms all in one. So I'll do triceps and calves. Today I did a bit of biceps. Tomorrow yeah. I'll do chest and shoulders and legs on. On the uh, on the Friday, or I might do hamstrings Thursday, quads on the Friday. Literally, I'll play it however I feel. And I tend to do, I've not done it lately, but I usually do generally every day 30 minutes cardio. So the first thing in the morning or after the weights or whenever? It used to be first thing in the morning. Now the, night, the, the um, dark nights are drawn in and I'll just throw it in as and when I feel like it later on, maybe. Hey, Zach, yeah, so you're going to be pleased with me, by the way. So uh, from last Thursday. Oh, oh, are you on it? I'm on it, right. So I've done, uh, John, John come to see us last week. We had a chat. And yeah. he lifted his top up and said, I've still got abs. <laughs> right. So I know he's got lean condition. So I thought, right, <laughs> this is it. So I've been doing two cardio sessions a day and I've been training weights. I did four days on and a day off yesterday. Just done the gym before this podcast so I didn't want to miss it. And I'm actually yeah. feeling, I probably don't look any different, but in my head, I had a shower up to the mirror. I was like, fucking looking full. Yeah. And... So yeah, I'm back. I thought it'd be appropriate yeah. to be training whilst... I am running a supplement company, contract manufacturer, and heavily involved in the industry. I don't want to be Willy Wonka. So, uh, you've got, you've, 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 bloody hell, you've got your office there, and you've got a treadmill in it, and you're not even using it. I'm like, get on it, lazy bastard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Kirk, you don't have no fucking excuse. You can, know. You, you can do half of your stuff on that treadmill while you're fucking talking to somebody. You know Exactly. What? I know. Mm. I've got every supplement possible as well. But um... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, pro the problem is you get... You get comfortable, and when you get comfortable and out of a routine, it's fucking hard mm. to get back into a routine. Mm. And that's the hardest bit, is taking the first step, you know? It is. Do you know something? So my treadmill, I thought, was broke. And um, that was one of my excuses. And when I actually started to try and make it work again and work out what it was broke, it was just I'd knocked the plug out the back slightly so it wasn't connected properly. And that was an excuse for not doing it for two or three days. And I was uh, like, I even rung uh, up my engineer who does all my machines to fix my machine. Oh, Christian, my uh, my treadmill's broke. You said you tried all the plug connections. So I looked at the bottom and the fucking thing was half in, half out. So that was a bit of a game changer for me. Well, it's resolved the problem, hasn't yes. it? And now you're on it. I'm back on it, mate. I'm back on it. <laughs> Himself, isn't he? Yeah, John, just fucking using excuses. Well, you'll always find an excuse if you yeah. want, and, as, then, as, and that's it. And we're all guilty of that at some point in our lives. I think the only problem is, John, you know what happens? It's like I think a lot of people, and uh, you know, when their bodybuilding career is over, mm. they like they just identify as a bodybuilder. It's hard for them to identify as somebody else you know what yeah, i mean I think it's the reinvention of oneself isn't it you've got yeah. to understand this that when you're competing and it's like basically predominantly your life or a large portion of your life you like you say you identify to that image that you've created but it's it's not really sustainable and healthy to do that at that extreme level forever 
Um, yeah. Just got to simply take off the Batman suit, so to speak. You know, take take off the, the cloak. And then, you know, it's just sort of like being being acceptance of being a smaller version of what you are. And And I think that a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people struggle with coming off steroids themselves, yeah. John. Yeah, well, just, yeah, because the thing about it is you go from feeling like superhuman in the gym, taking, you know, tests and whatever you're going to be taking, then all of a sudden, you know, somebody says, listen, have you had a break yet? And they have a break for a couple of weeks and they start feeling shit. Mentally, they start feeling a bit depressed and the hormones are all over the place and they're thinking, fuck this, I can't do it. So they go back on a cycle again. And before you know it, these guys and these kids are like in their 20s, they haven't taken time off a cycle for like five years. Well, it's, I mean, it's literally what I'm seeing. I've had the argument, one or two, shall we say, brief disagreements with a current crop that are in the midst of it all now. And I said, listen, you guys, you've got to have, when, when we were using stuff, we had breaks. We, when we were off, we were off. Today, people go, and I've done a poll saying, like, obviously, I'm now clean, I don't take anything. And the next question they come up with, so you're not, are you doing TRT, though? I went, no, I said I'm off. I don't use anything. That means off today. Off means, ah, well, yeah, I'm off, but I'm taking a mill, you know, uh, 250 milligrams of test a week. Well, I said, you're still on, aren't you, you idiot? You're not yeah. off. Yeah. yeah it's quite, high, it's quite a high amount, that, as well, Zach. So I was, I've done TRT, looking at TRT, and it's actually like about 80 milligram, 90 milligram a week, a week that is normal yeah. TRT, where it's 250. I think normally you produce between 45 and 90, quote me if I'm wrong. But 10 two, milligrams a day. Yeah, so 250 is like way, way over. Yeah, but this is what it's they're a doing. cycle, isn't it? Yeah, or they'll do a sports TRT. Someone comes out with that classic, like, yeah. you're like, yeah, the sports fucking TRT is like 300 megs a week. You know what I mean? Like, you're not off, mate. You're not off. It's just being purported by a so-called retard. That's how I look you know, at I've got it. a question for you then. So, all right, talking about transitions then from kind of being a pro bodybuilder to coming off cycle and yeah. uh, main, having a maintenance and a long life. Uh, how was the transition then when you obviously, back in the day, I mean, you're a fantastic bodybuilder on the Olympia stage, probably leading the the, the flag for, for the UK um, for quite some years. What was it like then transitioning off to completely being off completely? Because that's obviously something not many people do, the TRT. Uh, tell us a little bit about your test levels at the moment where they're at and how it was the transition to coming off everything. Well, well let's go back to the time when the last time I competed was the British Grand Prix 2011. I literally didn't know it was going to be my last show. I just went in with a view to, right, I'm going to support the lads. Simon yeah. Pham put a lot of money and effort into it. Neil Hill was part of it. And I said, yeah, I'll, you know what, I'm, have a go I'm, I'm going to do it. And um, and that was it, really. I went in with probably the, one of the most relaxed attitudes I'd ever been. I, I knew my, guy, my game plan. I knew how everything would un unfold. So I knew what I was going to be able to deliver. And, and I did. You know, I was very happy with how it went. And then at the end of it, I literally walked out from the venue and everyone screamed saying, John, it's best you've ever looked. Brilliant. You go to the Olympia. We're all coming. We're all going. And I just turned out my mom and me, my auntie was with me, my two training partners, my very first training partner when I first started, Mike Codlin, and my last training partner, um, Gavin. And um, I just looked at him and went, you know what? I think I'm going to call it a day. And it was literally, I just had a little thought to myself for the next couple of days. But during that day, the, the, one of the phone calls I got was off Alvin Small, who said, I'm ringing, rang you, he said, I want to ring you up and just congratulate you. He said, you look phenomenal. We were all, we're gobsmacked how you looked. And it was at that moment then when I went, that'll do. I've got nothing to prove. I'm going to call it a day. And so I did. And that was it really. I didn't have thought about it. And then I'll be honest with you, I was um, Branch Warren won the open class. And I remember uh, Branch, me, we went for something to eat with Branch. And um, the next day he came to my, he actually was staying in a hotel around the corner for me and he came into my house and we were chatting and that. And I was saying to him, oh, I'm going to just do some HCG, you know, like you do after your show and that. And I was going to do 500 IU every day for 30 days for a month. Mm. And he said, well, my endocrinologist um, said, listen, you, when you've been on a course for quite, you know, like a good 10 to 12 week course, you know, use a thousand IU. So 
I just did that, did 1,000 IU of HCG for 30 days. And that was it, I come off. Now, just to skip a little bit back, before I did that last show, my test levels was uh, around 1.1. So right. they were extremely low, yeah? So yeah. I went, right, well, I'm still, I'm getting ready for the show, you know what I mean? I just knew what, where they were, I thought, well, that's it. And I had a break, I'd, I'd had plenty of time off, um, you know, like two or three months. And then I finished the show, did the HCG, and then luckily there was the, the clinic, which was like your know, legal exchange clinic. They were doing the blood tests, and I got yeah. to know the guy, and I could go down at any time. So I said, listen, I want to map out. And I've got all my blood tests from when they stopped doing it, from when I retired, just before, when I retired, and for about five years, four or five years worth of blood tests that I've had done. So I know exactly, and I can pull them out and go, look, there you go, you can see I'm telling you the truth. And when I, after the show, the first blood test I had, I think it was around about the 2.6 mark. Mm. LH and FSH were sort of like, like still suppressed. And it took me about 10 months to 12 months to get into the normal parameters. I didn't think about it. All I got at the gym at the time was, and especially my ex-business partner, he said, oh, you'll be back on in no time. And I just turned around and just said, I said, you do know who you're talking to. I said, I don't, I, I said, if you haven't got the measure of me yet, you will never will have. I said, I said, I will make, I will make sure I will come through this. And so I just plowed through. I'm not saying it was an easy route or anything like that. Um, I didn't really have, I, I, what, the woman I was seeing at the time I split up with anyway and so I didn't have a woman to contend with. So I thought it was that made it a bit easier then, did it? <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? So and it was one of them. And then it took me about 12 months in which to get my, my test levels then went above 10 wow. naturally. So the thing is, what, what I've proven throughout my bodybuilding career and that period coming out and trying to get and then getting your level, your testosterone levels into the normal parameters is that. It, it was all about determination, per, perseverance. You don't fall at the first hill. You've got to keep going. And you've got to be persistent. You've got to be consistent. And so what I was doing when I retired, I didn't go into a shoddy lifestyle. I was still doing the basics of what a bodybuilder would do. I would be yeah. training. I would be eating. I would be do, eating healthy. I was ne I'm, ne I'm not a big lover of eating rubbish anyway. So mm. for me, to function well, feel well, and, you know, shall we say, uh, you know, be, to be able to live a good, healthy lifestyle, you've got to put the pieces together of, you know, eating right and training. It's, it's just the simple format that keeps everything going. Yeah, so, John, but what advice would you give to somebody who's, like, wants to, that transition, yeah, and, you know, wants to basically come off everything, you know, and basically, like, doesn't want to take anything, but he's finding it hard. So it's like, you know, a couple of months into it, it's like mentally he can't handle it. Because a lot of guys, that's where they fail. It's the mental aspect. It's how it makes them feel mentally. You know what I mean? And uh, and how did you overcome that? Didn't really, didn't really think about it. I really honestly didn't think about it. I just, I sold you through. You didn't, you didn't look at yourself losing sides and thinking, oh, my God, I'm, stuck. I'm fucking not myself, you know what I mean? Lose that, yeah. bit of that confidence, walking around thinking that, you know what, I've lost quite a lot of sides. Like, I'm in my clothes, you know, I'm dieting now, you know what it's I mean? It's the identity as well, I mean, Zach, was, isn't it? It's the identity was, that you associate yourself was, with, I think. Yeah, I was still in, in the contest shape, and his pictures prove this, about eight weeks later, and I was still wearing the same without any of the gear virtually. Wow. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but then eventually it started to, you know, it, it petered down. But it was just a, it was an acceptance I already programmed into my head. I went, yeah. you know, that's the way it is. I didn't actually use anything at all from when I retired. And then I went away to Australia and I did about a six-week course. I think one shot of test a week it was with someone else um, for six weeks. And that was two. That was over two years later, just to do a little rebuild. Yeah. yeah. Hey, John, just talking about like men mentality then. So when you knew it was your last show, yeah. you knew you were going to come off. This is it. You're not coming back on. 
Mm. Did you have something lined up which made it easier to process that with? Say, for example, like, I'm done with the bodybuilding. I'm going to concentrate on my business. Or was there something there that kind of, because a lot of people, I think, because they, they, all they have is the training. They go to nine to five jobs. They, you know, they might not be working for themselves. Mm. They then finish the bodybuilding shows and life carries on without the bodybuilding. They kind of, they need it. What, 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 did you have something to help you transition? No. No. No, I didn't. I just went, doing it, yeah. and I'm going to deal, I, I doing it, deal with it, get it done. I suppose because you were still going to train after that, weren't you? You were never, ever going to stop training the whole of your life. So this was just a different yeah. phase of training, I take it. It, it, it was just something I, I actually, I, I, it's, it's an internal thing that you have to accept. Yeah. This is what I'm choosing to do. This is how it is. And how far I make a conscious decision now. There's no need for me to be on anything and I'm just going to concentrate on trying to get myself into them normal parameters and focus on being uh, healthy. And whereabouts are you at now, John? What, what levels are you test at now? Because obviously, I know we spoke a little bit about this last week and I was quite shocked. Well, I, 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 couldn't be, I couldn't believe it because I, I went to Dave Crossland, you know, Eva. Yeah. And um, I saw him at the, at the show, you know, at the Blackpool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Fitex um, finals. But, Fitex body, yeah, yeah pretty chemical sponsors. warfare Fitex finals actually, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, there, you go. Yeah, yeah. there you go, sponsored by yours truly. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I saw him there, so I was having a chat with him, and so I said, "Oh, I'll come round and uh, I'll get some bloods done." So then I, I went round, and then about I did him, I got them done on the Monday, and I got the results on the I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, and when I opened up, I nearly, I nearly fell off the chair. I was like. What the fuck is this? It can't be right. So your normal parameters were some like six to yeah. twenty five point seven, yeah. and mine was twenty four. Wow! And I went. Wow! <laughs> so I rang up Dave and went, Dave. So it's John Austin. He went, Hey, John. He said, I said, Are these fucking tests right? And started giggling. He went. He went. Yep. He said, You must be some kind of Superman. And we just started laughing. And I was like, Bloody hell! Because normally my, my test would be floating around 16 to 19. Yeah. And the LH was actually above slightly the normal level it should be. So so what have you done different? Or is it just down to you? You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, and that I've been saying this to people, putting more whole eggs in my diet. I eat whole eggs, yeah. I, I have a minimum of five whole eggs a day. Yeah, I eat... I eat six whole eggs every day. I don't. I don't like to waste the eggs, me personally. I eat whole eggs. I think. I think it's stupid when you take the yolk out. You know what I mean? I agree. I mean, we were all doing that. John's eating whole eggs Nothing. now, actually, in his bowl. Yeah. aren't you? Yeah. You've got yeah. some yeah. You've got whole eggs in your bowl. Yeah, but yeah. We, yeah, we have. We used to get the egg whites, want it, and they like ten egg white, uh, ten egg whites, two or three yolks. Yeah. yeah. And to be honest with you, the most. Bioavailable protein, even more so than whey and all that, is whole egg. Yeah, exactly. Whole egg is the best protein you will get. You know, and, pe and it makes me laugh when people, you know, these new age bodybuilders, and they say, oh, you're having so much fat. I'm thinking, this is a guy who's eating fucking 5,000 calories on a fucking pizza. <laughs> on a fucking burger. And fucking rest of the shit. And then and they're jamming fucking... 10 tablespoons of peanut butter down them. Oh, don't get me started with it. Hey, just to slip this one in, guys, I actually drove past the Haribo factory yesterday. And it was, uh, yeah. it was quite some experience to me because I've had that many Haribos these last six months. I don't anymore, by the way. I finished, but I drove oh, past it. It was like, ta da, moment. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that in from the guy who's not been training much, but carry on. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. So, so oh, right. were, go ahead, John. Go ahead. So, whole legs. And to be honest with you, I mean, I'm not lifting the weights that I used to. I'm, I'm lifting probably no, half, the, half the weight I used to lift. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I still, I still try and push it within certain, you know, like to a, to, to a fair capacity. Of course. And so, again, the other thing is I have a, a lean body mass index as well. So yeah. that in itself tells you tells a, a, a story to what's internally working and how things are working internally as well because if obviously you're very low in testosterone you'll be down you'll be down and out you, you'll be putting on body fat easy yeah and so 
Again, it's just that my, my, my eating is, this is basically what I tend to eat on an average day. I'll have 100 grams of oats in the morning, some frozen blueberries in that, banana, five whole yeah. eggs, yeah. Um, scrambled in butter. Yeah. So, again, I've got some good saturated fats in there. Yeah. I'll have, um, brown rice, two, two, two meals of brown rice with turkey. So I'll yeah. have two mince and turkey thigh mince mixed together yeah. and then make that into 200 gram patties. Then I have, um, what do I have? I, I have like, um, I have a, a piece of fruit and some rice cakes or an oat bar with some protein powder after a workout. And then like now I'm having like noodles, uh, Vietnamese noodles with some fish, garlic, ginger, uh, chilies. Uh, and that's it. And then I'll, I'll glug um, some, maybe some uh, extra virgin olive oil, a couple of glugs of that a day. And it's, <laughs> it's crazy, John, because that is a type of diet, eh? Well, people would diet on and they'll find it hard. Do you that's, know what I'm saying? That's normal. Yeah, exactly. But you're eating good, wholesome food. I always said to people, eh, you know, when you go to a supermarket and you want to choose what to eat, choose stuff with that ingredients, what you have to make. So, so anything you have to cook yourself with that or ready, ready-made meals, anything like that, that's what you need to eat. You know what I mean? And keep it simple. Zach, well, look, sorry, John. Zach, you just made a yeah. quick point there. You said about like um, John finds that easy, other people find that difficult. Now, yeah. just just to kind of go into this a little bit, and it's something I'm really interested in speaking to you and John about. I'm sure a lot of the viewers are like this as well. Is um, John obviously finds that very easy. So, a transition from an amateur mentality to a professional bodybuilder's mentality um, to find that very easy. What what is the actual difference then between the amateur mentality, and then when you get to that next level, and to progress as a pro at the next level, it, to... it was no different for me. No, no, because I was like Kerry when I was working with Kerry Case. Kerry Case said to me, he "said John, I've never known anyone like you." He said, "I've known them all. I've had all the guys from America." He said, "You are like a fucking machine. You're a robot." Yeah. And my meals were all weighed out. I had my Tupperware with me every day. Because yeah. I knew that I've got to give this everything I've got. I'm not genetically gifted, but yeah. I would bust my ass in the gym and I trained bloody hard and I was consistent with my food. Okay. And I would challenge most people on the planet to be, if you could be as consistent as me, then you're going to be probably the best version you will ever be. I think, John, you've said it yourself. I think... There is no difference between amateur and pro. The only difference is when you become a pro, you know, do you want to make this your livelihood or do you just want to prance about in it? And yeah. you, only take, yeah. you only have that one take to make that impact and do what you need to do. And you've got to work with your God-given genetics. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and basically, you knew there is no... Nobody can outwork you. So that's what that's what you're gonna work on. It's your machine mentality. You yeah. know what? Yeah, it was. Yeah. There was no other way. Yeah. I knew, and, that, I knew what all I had to do. I thought all I was looking at. Look, I'm a pro now. I'm gonna be pe- competing with the big boys. It's a different level, but for me, it was like I can't. But I can't worry too much who I'm competing against because I knew I was competing against. It was yeah. a competition with myself to become bit better, and yeah. that was it. And then. You know, the goal was to get to the Olympia stage. Okay, I didn't make it in the open class, but then the 212 class, 212, 202 class came about. And so that gave us short guys a fairer hit. And, you know, look fortunate for me. Uh, I managed to get there in 2009. So a dream was like made, you know. So, yeah. Joe, what was it like? What was it like then? Um, stepping on stage for the first time as a pro against people you've probably followed uh, throughout their well, careers and what was it like? It was, two, it was two weeks after I won the Britain in um, 1999 yeah. and the show was held in my hometown in Manchester oh. and it was a British Grand Prix which was a week after the Mr Olympia oh. and so <laughs> one minute you'd been crowned British champion uh, middleweight title, I didn't win the overall but got pro card that year anyway oh. and um, next minute, two weeks later I'm on stage with Ronnie Coleman <laughs> Flex <laughs> Wiggler, <laughs> Um, there's a uh, Marcus Rue. Uh, John, I was I was there at the show. Fuck me! Listen, the, they reckon it was the best pro show ever outside of the Olympia ever. 
yeah, ever. It, they still talk about it, the greatest show, uh, 90, uh, 1999 uh, British Grand Prix. Mate, you, you look fucking, mate, condition-wise. Oh, it's peeled. There was nothing on me. Mate, listen, okay. use an uh, anatomy chart, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. uh, and like I said to you, it's like, this is where the smaller guys beat the bigger guys on fucking condition. Because well, the... Yeah. The, the thing about it, John, is because you guys, I don't know what it is with the shorter guys, but the bigger guys want to play the size game, and the, the size game is their downfall because they always don't come as sharp. You know what I mean? And well, that's we, can, the, we can go on to that, with, especially with it now coming into the Olympia, this, this current crop as well. So if yeah. you remember, the last beast who really nailed the condition and was just on another planet was always Dorian, wasn't it? Let's be honest, yeah. Darwin size and conditioning but um i mean there was not there was nothing on me i was yeah. that that show the britain i was peeled to the bone but i was ready to step on stage at 13 stone two and i had to make it i had to get my body weight down to 12 stone eight Fuck. and so i remember this because god rest his soul mike sheridan bless him he's not with us now um i did a seminar four weeks before i did the britain and uh when I stripped off, he was there with his, some of his gym buddies. Me and Kerry were doing a seminar, and he looked at Kerry and he went, how the fuck's John going to make the 80 kilos? And Kerry turned around and said, it's John, John you're talking about. He'll, he'll chop a leg off if he has to. He said, he'll make the weight. And believe you me, it was like walking through. I, I felt like I was walking through treacle for four weeks. It was painful. But I got there. Yeah. Was you finding it hard? to uh, come down in weight because of the muscle what you had? Actually, no. It, it, it got to a point where it started to really free fall, so I had to eat up. Yeah, yeah, because you're burning more. You're burning muscle tissue away, so you, you've you got to be careful, don't you, John? You well, know the day I mean? before I won the Britain, you'll love this one. The day before I won the Britain, the eight kilo, I had 16 meals. What? Yeah. What the fuck? And drank 16 litres of water. Wow. How did you feel after that? I went round to see Kerry in the morning because I went, Kerry, my weight's plummeted. I'm down to 77 kilo. And I thought, I went, I've had 700 grams of carbs for the last two days. So he went, just go away and eat. That's all he said to me. It was none of this. I want you to do this. Come and see me this time. It was go away, John, and eat. So I said, right, yeah. okay. So I had basically worked out with sweet potato and uh, white rice um, and banana and some turkey. And I calculated 80 grams of 80 grams of carbs per meal. Yeah. And I, and I ate every hour going bump, 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 bump. And then at the end, um, I weighed myself. And I'll, don't forget, I was, I, was, I was weighing it 12. I, was, I dropped to about 12, 6. And then Kerry saw me at night time and I'd just weighed myself before he bumped into me and he went, what are you weighing? I went, 13, 10. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I went, and that was in one. One day, that, that was from the morning to the night. And oh. obviously, I used a little bit of Aldaptone to, you know, like, yeah. keep me to uh, keep me tight. And I just, I was drinking loads, and I had steak and uh, chips at night time. And, I wore, and then on the day of the show, I weighed in it, I think it was 79.75. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So. I was backstage, and one of the, another lad, um, he's not with us now, but it sounds awful, this. And he, he, remember him, Nick, he was called, he, he said, you were backstage pumping up. And we all turned around and he said, and all, all you seen was this going, tss, tss, tss. it's like you just were blowing up, inflated as backstage. But yeah. Yeah, like I said to you, John, it's like, it's crazy. You know, like what you talk about, you know, the basics and everything. It's like oh. now, everything is just so like, it's, it's like basically people need need an easy option because they not they don't want to pay for a hard option. Well, bodybuilding is not meant to be easy. No, when you but, get into that absolute extreme conditioning, that separates the men from the boys. Exactly. Have you got what it takes mentally to push through the pain? Because believe you me, you'll feel like rock, curling up into a ball and going in the corner and rocking like mad sometimes and think, "What am I doing to myself? Why am I doing this?" And then when I got to that stage. That's when the twisted mentality came in. I started to smart myself and going, yeah, that's yeah. where you need to be, boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Zach, so when you were with Neil, I think when you just turned pro, 
Um, when was you turn pro? What year was it now, Zach? Was it 2000 and, um, 2009. I mean, you looked incredible. That it was just before you obviously ah, had that, that knee problem. Ask him about the uh, cardio because I was with him when he was with Neil. Oh, okay. Oh, these two fuckers, Neil and John, were walking and doing cardio. And when these fuckers were burning off like Speedy Gonzalez, and I'm like a fucking slug there, <laughs> just fucking dragging my fucking feet. These guys, these guys reached to the top and then they're walking back down <laughs> <laughs> and facing me on the way back down. I swear to God, I tell you one thing when I spent time with Neil, and like I said to you with John for that bit of time, I realized. These two guys are a different fucking breed. Different fucking breed. I, I've seen a lot of bodybuilders in my time, in my days, and I always said to guys like, you know the old school chemical warfare team, you know what I mean? Remember the magazine what used to come out with uh, Kerry and... Oh, oh. Oh, by yeah. the way, guys, listen, Zach, uh, I got a message off uh, Drew Walker yesterday. It's a picture... I'm going to put it up. I'll make sure the guys can see it on this, uh, on this podcast. It's a picture of John... Dorian Yates. Um, hold on. Who else is on it? There's, uh, there's is loads it the one of I put up on Facebook? It might have been the one you've put on. I got sent yeah. it from Drew the other day. And um, he had loads of the old Chemical Warfare team on it. He had me, and, uh, Dorian, yeah. Ian Harrison, Ernie Taylor. That's right, Ernie Taylor Thomas, in the background, yeah. Terry Kays. Yeah. Uh, Billy Jones. Yeah, there it is. A couple yeah. of the girls at the front. Yeah, looks like the partners. Yeah, great yeah. picture, that. Where was that? That was yeah. at uh, Vic's, Vic's gym. Vic, uh, Vic's, Vic's gym, yeah? Yeah. Gym John, they, they, that was the fucking hardcore crew. You know, Chemical Warfare, them days, with Ken Case, and the team he had, it was like the fucking Avengers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was, yeah, that's what Look, it was. Talking, really about, was. talking about Avengers a second, I've got a question for you. Who would win a fight, Spider-Man or Batman? Just going off onto Marvel a little bit. Just a quick throw in there question. Uh, I think, I think Spider Man, John, why because he'll just he won't need to come anywhere near Spider Batman, would he? Just use his fucking web, wrap it around, and just fucking rag him well, around. Well, and Batman's, Batman's got all the contraptions that are just splitting the web open, wouldn't he? I think, I think Batman is a bit too much, he's too intelligent. Uh, I think Spider Man's too quick. I like Spider Man, but yeah. I think I, I don't know, I think Batman would just. There'd be something that'd be it. It uh, where's is the intelligence factor would he'll have something up his sleeve. In a way, I, I like Batman. He'll be more aggressive, yeah, compared to Spider Man. You know what I mean? He's got the uh, voice, hasn't he, Zach? You'd be a good Batman. I can imagine you with the deep voice doing the Batman soliloquies to himself and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Zach, man. <laughs> well, that's a good. That's a good tie. Anyway, going back then to the uh, the chemical warfare day. Sorry, I had to put that one in because it was perfect timing for the question. Well, well. But um, yeah, I think no. looking back, because I, I was uh, just starting out bodybuilding. Then I was at Body Masters Gym with Andy White. I remember Andy who passed yeah. away. And Andy used to uh, be a massive fan. He speaks to Boris and all the time. He'd have all the chemical warfare products in there, the skull and crossbone and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So what was it like then back then being part of that unit with uh, uh, with uh, Ernie and Dorian and everyone? What was it? What kind of memories have you got? I bet it's uh, it's kind of what what steered you to be who you are today in the training side of things, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's um, I suppose it's a time that will you'll never experience again. Because it was it was before the Instagram, yeah. Facebook, the, you know, yeah. the social media. So there was sort of this magical element to it, and the only time that you really got to see these fellow, you know, see guys and that was when you were doing seminars. It was this more of this magical mystique to it, and so when you travelled, people would go out of the way. And you'd want to meet up and see these, even, you know, even I used to look forward to seeing guys that I've not seen. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you look at it and you think you, you, you're among some, you know, elite level guys. And um, I suppose it, it's, it's, you bounce off each other in a way. Zach, who inspired you? Because uh, obviously John's a little bit pre your era, I think. It's a little bit pre your era. Who, when you were coming through the ranks, who was it, you, the guys that you looked to, up to? Was it like John? Dorian, who, who was it who kind of made you push? Yeah, like 
see, you know, Dorian was the main guy who was in here at that time because he was that rugged and he had that mystique about him, you know what I mean? Where you didn't, you didn't, he just was in the fucking dungeon that Jim was in it, you know what I mean? You just thought, who the fuck is this monster? And that's the thing about the chemical warfare days then, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you had John, I used to look at them in the magazine and I used to think, fuck me, man, these guys, are they fucking even human? Do you know what I mean? Ernie Taylor and all these guys. And I used to look up to all these guys, you know what I mean? Because when you used to see them at shows and everything like that, he was happy to go to bodybuilding shows. You were excited to go to bodybuilding shows because not only about people who competed, about the people who were walking around in the crowd. And it was, like I said, it was a different fucking era. And like, one thing I've learned from like, you know, following John and Dorian and all these guys is like, if you ask them now, how much have their training changed? How much has their diet changed? And they'll tell you, not much. Because what is what works fucking works. And why? I mean, Dobbin doesn't train as much now. Obviously, he's reinvented himself because of injuries and he does more physical, you know, fitness yeah. type. Thing. So he's reinvented himself in that respect. And he does his yoga and, you know, he's, he's far cry from what he looked, at, he looked like, you know. But um, he's, still, he's, still use, he's, he's still aware of physical fitness. Yeah. To yeah. keep maintaining healthy, uh, yeah. healthy body. Yeah. It's, it's like you, John, like from the time you started training, you know what I mean? Like who told you about training when, you, you know, about the hit style and, you know, the way you trained and the stuff like that? Well, to be honest with you, I mean, I've, I answered this question prior to, on a previous podcast. For me, when I first started going into the gyms, and I wasn't really reading tons and tons of such, but I found myself applying a logical approach to it. And it was a case of when I come to train and then when I got to my heavy set, I would just give it everything I've got. And to me, then it was like, well, I can't do any more. I've done, done what I can. I've sent, I've, you know, I've done what, I've sent the message to the muscle. So I was actually doing it unbeknownst yeah. to reading other, other stuff, you know, beforehand. So that yeah. was more in when I was looking to sort of maybe compete at some point. But prior to that, as a teenager, we just used to mess around with weights. Yeah, yeah, but the thing about it is, it's like, don't you think there was less confusion? Yeah. Without yeah. A doubt. But you know me, Zach, how much have I been screaming? And you, I've said it time and again, and I've had my little rants and I've gone, will you stop trying to complicate it? And what it is, is that everybody's trying to complicate it and justify their existence as to why they're charging X, Y, and Z. And I'm saying to people, the most important thing is bodybuilding is not difficult in principle. It's so simple. The arbit is doing the simple stuff consistently. And that's training damn hard with good form, going to failure, yeah, within a specified rep range, say six to 12 reps on your heavy sets, yeah, and then making sure you eat right when you're out of the gym, and then if you're going to use anything, don't be a dickhead and, and overkill and oversaturate yourself. But you know, and I know, I I know people, and everything gets back to me. Trust me. And some of the stuff that's being recommended by so-called so pros and experts today, here yeah. in the country and abroad, um, it's ridiculous. I, I think you know, like everything's overkill. Training yeah. is overkill. The food is overkill. Drugs is overkill. It's all about eh, everybody who's saying, listen, yeah, fucking eat all this shit food and take 10 t frees a day or take DMP. Like, as really? Like, you're just, you're just basically counteracting everything. It's like, why not do? let your body do it? Let your body naturally burn body fat. Mm. Only some fat burners of when you need to need it you know what i mean yeah. you, you yeah, I mean, a little goes a long way when you're doing everything else correct exactly that's what we say if you're doing everything great naturally yeah you're training right you're eating right and everything then i said to somebody if you can do that for the next two three years naturally then you're ready yeah. you're ready yeah. to take that little step not a big thing. So when it, we live in a world of instant gratification. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, lot of misinformation out there, and that's sadly the thing. I've, you know, and it, what's the answer? What's the answer? Because 
people like me went, oh, you're old school. Oh, you're just a moaning old cunt. You know what I mean? That's what you get. And I'm going, I'm not. I'm just someone who's who's being honest, trying to help people and tell you the facts. And the, and I've got my diaries to prove what I did. We're yeah. all saying it. Even, look, you look at Jay Cutler and he's come on. Um, Ronnie, uh, Dexter, myself, Adore. we all, when we came, when we were on stuff, when it was time to come off, it was clean out time and have a break. I like it. I akin it to two or three steps forwards, then taking a good step back, letting your body recover, your receptors recover, and letting your body have a perfect break. example. That's Kevin Levrone as well. I mean, I used to be a massive fan. I still am yeah. actually of, of Kevin. Um, <laughs> and uh, when he used to downsize, I think it was on the Maryland Muscle Machine video when he was starting to get into his rock band playing. He was so much smaller. I mean, he dropped down to like two. 10, something like that, maybe 200. And then he would then push it. And he did that every year. For the last, I think it was his last four or five Olympias, he'd come right down uh, and yeah. then come up. But nowadays, I mean, I've, I think with Instagram, like you were saying before, because that's the thing now, social media, having to, uh, a lot of the supplement companies are making people um, be in shape all the time for their own uh, sales yeah. and stuff like that. I think now to actually come off, um, people kind of just really think they can't do it because of all these different social media factors, yeah. um, contractual factors. Whereas back in the day before this was a thing, when they used to make a video, I remember watching John's video as well. He was a, a chemical warfare. He did a seminar. He was eating his food whilst he was doing the seminar. I remember this. I used to bought the DVD. Yeah. And uh, he was just there going, yeah, just fucking eat your carbs, eat your protein. It's not fucking sim difficult. And he was really blunt about it. That was all the information we got. Nowadays... You know, and I know this for a lot of the, the athletes who speak to me. They're like, "Look, Kirk, I'm I'm going to go dark for a bit. Is it okay? I understand if you want to drop me." And I'm like, "I ain't dropping no one. You know, yeah. live your life. I'm not the type of person to be like, if you're not posting five times a day, you're off." Yeah. But uh, in this day and age, I think it's difficult for people to do that. And I think what you're saying before, John, about the advice from the old cunts, you guys, and even where Zach was. Some of the best conditions and shapes. Everyone goes nineties bodybuilding. It's the best. Why? Because you took a break, probably. Because you gave time body to, to rest. There wasn't all these yeah, silly things in place. You know, yeah. training routines. Also, Kirk. Also, when you look at the, uh, like you said, the nineties physiques or whatever, the early two thousand. I think the difference as well. A lot of differences. People were building physiques on good nutrition. Good nutrition, not if it fucking meets your fucking macros. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the thing. The quality, you're going to build better muscle on a quality a quality protein. You know what I mean? Lean turkey, beef, stuff like that. You know? But if you're going to eat a fucking fast food and shit like that, you're telling me you're going to build the same quality fucking muscle. No, you're not. It's not going to happen. And that's what they're trying to do. I mean, I'm, I spoke with one or two genetically gifted bodybuilders and pros who do that. And I'm like going, there's no way, you know, I would, it would, that was very limited in the off season when it's time to get ready for shows. And even in the off season, it was just more, more of it. Yeah. Like with Dorian, why did was Dorian so shit? Cause he was just, he give everything. And what it was, was train hard and make, be meticulous with your food and you're on it. It's just like bang, bang, bang. And today people think they train hard and I'm seeing it, I'm going, no. Yeah. You know, a lot of them actually think they train hard and I've gone, come and train I, with me. I, I honestly think, you know what, we, we should do a boot camp, John, at your fucking gym and get fucking 10 volunteers and put them through a fucking chemical warfare fucking day of training and let's see how they fucking keep up, showing them how the basics works. Hey, Let's see. Uh, uh, fair game. Let's see. You think you've got what it takes? Let's do it. I've got a good question then. So, so obviously, I'm not a pro bodybuilder. I'm obviously fascinated. I've tried my best in bodybuilding, all right. When you say they're not training hard, tell us a little bit about the difference then between training hard and thinking you're training hard. What's the difference? How far are you pushing yourself? Is it every workout? Is it every other week? No, What's... it's fucking all the time. It's all the time, but you will have to periodize a little bit. The point being is, is that most people today are too focused on putting a tripod together, filming themselves, and they're in the gym too long, faffing about, and the intensity levels have dropped. The, the, yeah. the intensity builds density, and the real look. 
You don't see people train with the same intensity as John, where we were. Did John, you know? how long do you train in the gym? Uh, when I'm, well, uh, probably 45 minutes, maybe an hour is the max. Hour, it would never go beyond an hour. And there you go, and guys are fucking training in the gym for two fucking hours? They're not training all for two hours. They're in the gym for two hours. They're yeah. pissing about. And, and, and the problem, I see a lot of people there. Yeah, they're on Instagram filming themselves training. All I see is there, uh, they're finishing a movement. They're not actually letting the muscle contract and, you, and and move the weight with that muscle. All I see them is using the limb to move that way. They're not actually using the muscle to move that way. You know so, what I mean? Listen, the training is just using proper form. Yeah. It's simple t simple terminology. Correct form with as heavy weight as, weight as you can possibly use where that working set or sets will be 6 to 12 reps until failure uh, occurs. And then where you then can, with a, a training partner, you can do an assisted rep or two maybe where, and then on the odd exercise, some negatives. It's not, it's just not rocket science. No, but that's the problem is you've got, you know, people nowadays, eh, they're working out, eh, but they're not training the muscles. That's the difference. But the other thing as well is, is all this rotated... I don't even know some of the terminology. I'm, I just don't <laughs> into it. With a cable going super slow. And I'm going... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, exactly. The the thing is, I, I actually, you know what? I hate to be in starting off in bodybuilding this day and age because, you know what? It's so fucking confusing. Yeah, yeah I agree. You know, exactly. It's not the same. And the thing is as well, you know, like you touched on earlier, Zach, the uh, British Championships, it was a spectacle You'd go there, and then when the and then the classes had come out, and it was like, look at the size of the class, and everyone would be wet. And then when there's the heavyweights come out, everyone would be like that. The air arms would be going. And but, but the thing, but the yeah. thing about it was, John, there was guys like you fuckers there in the middleweights who were beating the fucking heavyweights. Do you yeah. know what? I mean? <laughs> <laughs> a, the thing was when we went to the British in Nottingham, we knew the winners every year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We knew the fucking winner. That's how nostalgic it was. Now, there's so many pro cards being given up. We don't know who are pros and who aren't pros. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I totally understand it's a business and it, things times have changed. But, you know, like I said to you, yeah, times have changed. But the thing about it is one thing you can't change is proper nutrition and proper training. We, 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 you know, we're going over this time and time again. We've just got to simplify it. Bodybuilding is simply about training right, training hard with intensity, and having good, solid nutrition in place. Don't complicate it. Stop trying to complicate a very simple process. John, what would you give two pieces of advice to somebody who's up and coming in bodybuilding today? What would you say to them? Just when you're in the gym, just train like your life depends on it, and then just fucking eat properly. Just eat good, wholesome, proper foods where your appetite, you know, like doesn't allow you to get that food in. Then then you use your protein powders, your supplements in that respect. It's yeah. a we call supplements to supplement what you're eating. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, 50% of my protein actually used to come from protein powder anyway. Yeah, no, I'm totally understand. So, you know, at the moment now, John, so tell people what you're doing with yourself these days. I've got my gym. Where's your gym? So people who don't know, uh, it's in. Uh, it's called Hollywood Muscle and Fitness, and it's just off uh, Junction Twenty Two of the M60. So you literally come off the motorway and we're right there. It is literally it? right off. Easy gym come, to find. Yeah, come off, and it's first left, first left again. Yeah, yeah. But, easy to find. Yeah, we'll have to come up. And, Absolutely. Uh, we'll there. So, in, so in the new year, guys, uh, what the plan is is we are uh, starting off the gym tours again. Um, we're going to hit this really hard next year. So um, yeah. we're going to come to John's gym. We've just um, stocked dedicated super gym in Liverpool. So we're going to do a, a full stay there as well. Um, and we're hoping to get out and about. Now, John, it'd be great to come down to your gym. We could possibly do some, uh, like, um, a live training session as well that we might be able to do if Chris from Pump Media what? comes so people can actually what? tune in. What? Like training session, fucking heavy yeah. training session. Yeah, so when you say training properly, training balls to the wall, let's let's put let's put them through it because you guys, Zach, John, you know, yeah. you, you're you're a different level of the way you your mentality is for training. Let's let's see it on yeah. camera. I'll yeah, put I'll you through one. 
Well, I'll be ready then. Look, oh. I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a little bit more flexy today because uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of shape back. So I'll be training as well. I'll be training as well. Definitely going to miss out on this one. Even if you just did biceps with me, trust me, you'll be shaking. No, honestly, I'm I'm back in. I'm 40 next year in June, and um, I want to be in the best shape of my life for my 40th. So well, uh, well you know, well you know what, eh? John can put a different person for a different train session. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Absolutely. No, it'd be, it'd be great, John. And like I said, I went to your gym, uh, called him before I went to the airport a few weeks back, and uh, yeah. it's great. It's It's got all the equipment. I said to you, what a great gym to train at. It's got that hardcore feel to it, but it's clean. You know what? It's just, it's, yeah. just the, it's got the perfect setting. It really is. It's everything that you would want a gym to be. It's not overly, overly fancy. Uh, you know, like with all, all the super... Mm -hmm ultra modern equipment the equipment we've got in there is absolutely bulletproof and it works a treat i'm sure a lot of the team would want to come as well i'm always like i said you're, you're a legend in british bodybuilding a lot of the team want to come down and train it's it's in the, it's in a good place actually the location in manchester it's a kind of good uh, accessibility hub for everybody uh, mm. around that area so uh, we'll sort it out after christmas new year we'll uh, we'll bring the film team down we'll have a good workout and you can uh, you can show us then a proper workout you and zach balls to the wall Beast yeah. mode. Ready when you are, guys. No, I think I think John's got a lot of knowledge, and and I think he needs to be he needs to showcase it more. And uh, I think he, he and you know when you're training people, I think people will see what you're talking about. It's different saying it, but yeah. when you're doing it and doing it, it's totally different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Funny enough, I had a few guys that I've been training today for the first time. Well, yesterday actually, and today, and they were like bloody going like, wow. We thought we were training right. <laughs> we, we, we've not been doing this right, have we, at all? I went, well, um, you see, I, I, I know how to pick up on the minute details, how to perfect the exercise, how to yeah, you know, like pick up that you're in, you've got to engage the muscle properly. And it's it's a whole new, new, new level for these people. But then I say, well, now you're going to really see some tremendous gains as, as you keep with this. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome guys. Like so, before we mm. call it a wrap on this one, I have got a couple of other questions, slightly cool. different from last week. Um, like I said, I get no saying these questions just appear on my desk. So, John, this is a good one for you. What's the most trouble you ever got into as a kid? As a kid, as a kid. Do you know what? I never brought any trouble on. <laughs> Right, you're too yeah, perfect. Perfect trainer, yeah, perfect dieter, perfect kid. I, I, I never did. I mean, I mean, I was head boy at primary school. I was head boy at secondary school. <laughs> right. It's yeah. only since I got older I, got, I become more corrupted. <laughs> um, I would. The, I actually never, ever brought any trouble home. I was, I was a little bastard at home at times. I was cheeky because I was, I was me and my younger brother and my dad, and we didn't have a father figure around, so. I was a little bit boisterous in that respect. Um, so I was a little shit at times. Um, the type of character that that I am. Um, looking back, I just go, but it, I'm, you know, my mum's still around and we, we, we laugh about it and we just, you know, I've always had that. I've had a fairly strong personality from being fucking born, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, getting into trouble, no, honestly, I, I literally can honestly say I was... Uh, a very respectful individual. Zach, can you uh, can you shed any light on what you were like when you were younger? Did you? I'm sure you must have got into some trouble. Yeah, uh, I pissed in a bottle and made my mate drink it. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough. I'm glad you said that. My mate did that to one of our other mates. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and his, him and his dad came knocking on my door. Oh, Wanting some God. more. <laughs> This is good knock, shit. Knock, What's this stuff you give him? <laughs> Why is this orange juice so hot? <laughs> oh no! It was actually we we when when the like we were doing when that happened with us. It was my mate Clark here, and we had a bottle of Iron Brew. So obviously, it, it looked and it was dark, but the lights had that yellowy orangey glow. Yeah, so yeah. one of the lads, we he was pretending to drink it, and one of the lads say, "Yeah, give me it." He said, "Let me have a drink." And then he just plugged it back, and next minute he's spitting everywhere, and I was laughing oh at him. So, but that wasn't me who pissed in the bottle, actually. Oh, I was, I was a little bastard, me. Fuck you, know, got into something. 
I was, I was actually pretty, I was very well behaved. I mean, where we were from, I mean, we, we grew up in a place called, you know, Moston in Manchester, but there were some right wrong uns around there at the time when we were kids. Yeah. You know, George, you know what we used to do on bonfire night, and eh? we, used to, we used to get dog shit, put it in a newspaper, eh? and, and we used to light it on fire and put it through letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the the close we used to throw asbestos on the bonfires and watch it blow up. <laughs> but we didn't know that. We, yeah, we were touching it with our hands. You weren't supposed to touch the thing. <laughs> Zach, I'm glad I didn't live near you when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, last question. Last question. There's a zombie apocalypse. Imagine it now. What three celebrities are on your side? Go for Zach first. No, Go for I know, Zach. To be honest with you, with all, that, with all that's unfolded in Hollywood, oh, yeah. I'd probably throw the lot of him into the pit of zombies. Yeah. Yeah, fucking. He don't want. I'm sorry, I would have throw the fucking... Get in there, you sick bunch of bastards. Yeah. Like I said to you, if... If, if I need a f two people to join me and to kill all these cons, it will be John and Kurt. So you can <laughs> fuck these Hollywoods. No, but exactly. No, the, that satanic click can go and get fucked. The thing I is, the, the thing is, it's getting exposed now. And you know what? And you know what? People are saying Ke Kanye is mental. No, he's fucking speaking the truth. He's had enough. He's had enough. You tell me what allows a multi a billionaire eh, get fed up with this shit and having to speak out well the old the, the old ruling isn't it eh? you know Vol yeah. said you want to know who's in control simply ask if you're not allowed to criticise yeah exactly and, and Hollywood has been sitting at the pile of this for too long and it's all coming out it's all coming out now it's coming you watch it you know it's going to be a shit storm you know what I mean exactly. yeah. So but, yeah, zombie zombie apocalypse. We should we should get let them loose on that lot, all of them. Yeah, all the, screen, the lot. <laughs> Take yeah. Them Have them all. Yeah, fucking child, fucking. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, your bal Enciaga. Yeah, yeah. yeah. one for you as well. Did you ever watch? I came across it last night by chance. Do you ever see the opening ceremony to the Commonwealth Games 2022? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did. What? Yeah. Yeah, keep your fucking eyes open. Yeah, exactly. The thing, <laughs> the, the thing is, John, the, you know, they put it in plain sight. Well, they have to, because it's yeah. called the karmatic law. Yeah, because they believe it. As long as they put it in plain sight, they're fine. All right. Rule by secrecy. And this yeah. is an old book by Jim Mars. You read gonna... that, it's very, very, very eye-opening. Is it? I'll check that out. Check yeah, that yeah. out on Amazon, guys. I'm sure you can get that okay. next day delivery on Prime. Okay. Yeah. It's a great book. Well, that's been very... Question, it's been very... Uh, well, that is, the, that is the questions, actually. We scribbled out the last one, unless you've got another one there, Dave. You want to you wanna quickly... Dave's in charge now of all the uh, audio guys, and the. Uh, so if this doesn't work very well, it's Dave's fault. Dave, you got any more questions for us? I'm good this week. He's good this week. Um, John, you got any questions you want to fire at me and Zach? Any funny... Would you rather or whatever? <laughs> oh, don't even go there for it that way. Like, get, I'd get shot. <laughs> no, no. Especially um, with Zach's, uh, you know, no, I just, no I shit's just, approach. <laughs> no, I just, I just think it's interesting that, you know, it's good to know that John is actually, he's woke, you know what I mean? He knows what's going on His in eyes the are world. wide open. I've yeah. been, well, I've been like this. This actually came about from a conversation I had with Dorian Yates back in the late 90s. Yeah. And, um, and he mentioned about, he said, oh, have you heard, heard a guy, David Icke? So I said, yeah, I've heard him vaguely. So I went and, and I went, I got one or two of his books and went to one of his, you know, two of his seminars. You know, I'm not saying everything he says is, is you don't hang on everything, but it gets you to then question things that's going on in life. And, you know, and it opens up pathways and then you obviously see, a little bit more, and I've always been very inquisitive, and and, and especially over the course of these last two or three years, it's mm. yeah, yeah, it's been one of them where you know you wake up, you think, mm, okay, yeah, I think it has been uh, quite um quite interesting, hasn't it? So oh. um, it looks like that's about it. I think Zach's actually managed to uh, log himself out, but uh, <laughs> on behalf of me and Zach, um, 
if we want to get him back on quickly, Dave, so I'll just press the accept button. Sorry about this, John. We might as well get the co-host back Sorry, on mate. to say, uh, say goodbye to the uh, the viewers. See how professional we are in episode three. We're getting there. Is he back? I don't know if he's back or not. Um, if he's not back. All right, here's a quick one for on. you both then. Go Who's going to win the Mr. Olympia? Oh, good question. Right, so I'm, I'm off out to Vegas on the 16th. Um, oh, yeah, you are. You're going I out. am. I am. Um, so, I think, I still think Rami's going to win it if he comes in in condition. I mean, Chad, Chad Nichols has got him this time again, third time round, probably be in the States by now. It's his to lose. Um, I like some of the new guys coming through. I think Nick Walker looks very good at the moment. Um, I think Brandon's probably going to put in a big effort because it's probably going to be his last Olympia. I reckon Bonac could come in really well. Um, Lebrard is looking good. I've been following some of his updates. It's a tricky one. I'm still going to say Rami's going to win, but mm. if he doesn't come in on, in shape, I think it's any of those four. I mean, who else is kind of coming through? Um, I like Blessing's physique, I'll be honest with you. I don't think he's quite there yet. I like his shape and structure. I think he's definitely won in a couple of years' time. Um, I'm going to go for Rami. What do you reckon? I'm not a fan of Rami's physique, if I'm being honest with you. I think there are a lot of areas that I would... I get it for the size factor and so forth in certain areas. I think he's he's lacking a serious depth in his back. And no lower lumber, no Christmas tree, which disappoints me. He's wide as a house. I'm not seeing enough hardness and that, you know, like detailed grainy, you know, that hardened look to the muscle. Yeah. And that's what he's been missing. I think... Bonac's the closest out of all of them that gets that heart. You know, he's got that real dense maturity yep. muscle to it with that detail. But unfortunately, Bonac's structure is he's on the limit of what his frame can offer. Mm -hmm. What about so, Hadi? What about Hadi Chopin? What I like I like Heidi, Heidi Chopin. He's exceptionally hard from the front mm -hmm. and in the lower half. But yep. when you do the rear double bicep, <laughs> and I brought this up, he's very he's very soft looking in the back from in in the back itself. Mm -hmm. So, again, you know, you want that real crisp, finished look from top to bottom. But I think if anyone, you know, if anyone who, who, who he's the one who's, you know, you're going to say, as condition goes, he gets very, very good condition, even though his back slightly is still soft looking when you look at it and analyse it closely, compared to his quads and his, his midsection, his upper body. I, I think if he nails it right... Um, the only problem with Hyde is, is obviously the funkiness that's going it's on. It's bad, isn't stuff. it? I was about to say that. It's, it's really, and it's really it's bad. It's and shoulders. Yeah. But again, I don't think he's the only one doing it. No. It's just, he's, he's a bit crude in, his, in, the, in the way he's done it. What do you think? Uh, so Ian Valier, he he's put some pictures on uh, last week and he looks massive, massive improvements. Um, what do you again, reckon he's going to place? The thing is, is, when you're up on stage, isn't it? when you're up on stage in the lights, You've got to be up close as well because you can all see, we can all see footage and pictures. But when you're there and you're seeing it up close oh. in real time, that's when you can really make a real con an, an honest assessment. Oh. It's a different ball game. Sometimes some pictures, and I felt guilty of it. You know, you've seen some footage, some pictures, and you go, "Yeah, mm, no." And then when you see other footage, you go, "Bloody hell!" Oh. You know what I mean? I I I'm telling you, what I'm looking forward to seeing. Samson from the UK. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, forgot I think he's got a great yeah. structure, great shape. And I said to Chris Jones, because he trains with him, and I said, he's, if he nails his condition, he is going to, it's going to be game on. Because he's, he has got a beautiful shape. I saw him at the, he was next to our booth, actually, at the wrist strap booth at the Arnold's. And he was actually talking to Zach. And uh, he looked impressive. See, I what don't, do you think, Zach? Is Zach back? Have we got Zach back or is he gone? I think we lost Sat before, John. Yeah. Yeah. Is he? He's rocking. Is he? Can you hear me? Oh, Hello? he's back. Yeah, yeah. Zach, come back. He's hear back. that? Yeah. I'm saying, Samson, from the pictures I've seen, if they're current, I think it's going to be hard for him to get that condition. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. How, how long ago were them pictures you've seen? Well, how far out was it supposed to be in them? The same. They were two, two weeks out or three weeks out. So. Mm. See, for me, 
And this takes us back to when, you know, uh, I was competing and it was the same with Dawson. and that. We were ready to step on stage three weeks out and we would just simply get harder and drier going into the show. You guys try it for? I agree. My, 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 my main concern is with with a lot of these guys, they work with a lot of these certain guys in America and these are supposed to be the, the in, 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 you know, in the know. These are the main guys. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't deliver it this year and you don't come in nails hard and drying hard, I'm telling you now, walk away from him, come and see me. I'll get you in shape. Exactly. And you'll, and you'll do it for fucking, and you'll do it for half the price. I'll tell you what, with Samson, I'll work with you for free and I'll prove my point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. John, the thing about it is when you used to diet, how many weeks did you used to diet for? I, I Well, I could diet. I could be ready for, I could be ready usually in eight, eight to ten weeks. But I would say to people, depending upon where your starting point is, you might, have to, you might need 16 weeks. Yeah, exactly. Simple as yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm, I'm seeing like you, I see a lot of guys and I'm going, you're looking and, and everyone's giving it, oh, they look great, look great. I'm going, you've got a fucking lot of work, mate. Yeah, that's the that's the problem, like, uh, like the, from the pictures I've seen with Samson, and that's what worries me. I'm like, is he going to be ready? You know what I mean? And, yeah, well, uh, I haven't seen, I don't even, as I say, I don't know how cool, where he is and, and like you say, if he, as I said to Chris, said he's good, if he got to nail his condition, no, yeah. you don't nail yeah. his condition, you, you're fucked, basically. Yeah, and the thing about it is, who, who else I wanna, I'm looking forward to seeing also is Andrew Jacks. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, again, I, I thought, looking at the pictures, though, if I'm being blunt, but I wasn't up close, I thought, I thought looking at James Holliday, he, he was more compact, he flowed, <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, it was more a complete package. I'm looking at Andrew Jack that Jackson. You look at him front on, you go, Wow! But then you turn around, he's got it's very weak in the hamstrings, yeah. not really, you know, yeah. gap, you know, yeah, the, the uh, calves and that. Yeah. yeah, the problem is, it's more than one pause. He looks like, tremendous in that front double bicep. Andrew yeah, Jackson. I mean, I'd, I'd have to see, like I said, I'd like to be up close and up front, and I give and then I could give a fair assessment. James Holland's yeah. had top 10. Who's that? James Hollingshead, top ten. Like I said to you, is yeah. If if he gets a if he gets a fair look, he definitely could be top ten. But the problem at it is, you know what happens with the Olympia? It becomes a popularity contest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a fair assessment. That in all fairness, that. So, I mean, when he was with Redcon One, he's obviously getting a lot of American press, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, a lot. Oh, the problem is now is with that Yamamoto, his face is not as much as in well, America. Well, just, just a little bit of breaking news. Aaron Singerman got out of jail two days ago from Redcon. He got he only did 11 he? months of his four and a half year sentence, so maybe James might be going back to Redcon now, Aaron's out. I mean, he does kind of yeah. change the game a bit for the uh, the USA. Uh, yeah, like uh, I said, I, support team. Guys, I hope they fucking do well and I fucking hope they smash it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because James is a solid sound. Yeah. Proper decent guy. He's one of the good guys in bodybuilding. Yeah. He's honest, yeah. you know. And you know, to get that, to get that condition, nail that condition. You know what yeah. I mean? Get that fucking yeah. That look where you think to touch is like touching marble, granite. Yeah. That's but, what's missing. Yeah. yeah, but but the thing about it is, John, do you think that some people can't get that look? They can. I just don't think they're prepared to work hard enough to get it. And 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 that's where it, yeah, and that's where it's mindset in it. And like you say, you have to go in a fucking really, really fucking dark place, yeah. And stop using excessive amounts of insulin because that's certainly going to not uh, help. Well, you, that's certainly going to stop you from yeah. getting that look. What I've noticed is a lot of people are using that drug, and the physiques are the lines are fading away. You know, the separation is yeah, not sure. Yeah, lines. It was actually Lee Labrada who said that in an article way, way back. Did he? Yeah, I remember yeah. him saying it. And he said, you know, when uh, you can tell that, you know, when people are using insulin, that, you know, when if you'd like, one of the ideas is like, you look at the rear double bicep, yeah. and in the old um, rules and regulations of for judging and the judging criteria, the rear double bicep was the one pose that the judges were to use to signify overall muscularity and conditioning. 
Wow. Because when you hit a readable bicep, you should be able to see the separation through the deltoids meeting into the arms, all the heads of the of the of the arm from the biceps, triceps, yeah. into the rhomboids, even into the lower lower Christmas tree. The whole lot should be popping. Yeah, exactly. Like look at your real real double bicep pose. Look at Samir Bernouz. Look at Dorian's. Yeah. Fuck me. And that's it. And the detail was from top bottom to the lot. It should be like a map. Yeah, that you see your fucking glutes, you see your hamstrings, you see your outer, yeah. you see your fucking calves, like from top to bottom. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. that's and that is what the one pose I always look at when I'm watching him at the Olympia. And that's why when people said, "Oh, Nasser should have beat Dorian in '97," no. and I just went, "Get to fuck! You are <laughs> blind as a bat." No way, man. No. Listen, one pose he looked good on, and that was double biceps, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's from, from the front that year, that was Dorian's uh, left bicep tear year, wasn't it? I think it was the tricep. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he had Tri his bicep tear ninety four, but his tricep. Tri tricep. Was gone. I mean, I looked. Oh. At, I looked at the front. Um, there was a picture on. I'm not sure it was on the on the internet sites of the day of NASA stood next to Dorian, and it was saying NASA or Dorian. It was one of them comparison Instagram pages. Uh, Dorian didn't look from the front. This is just my opinion. Um, as big as he has done that year, and probably due to the fact that he couldn't train a little bit near the end. But like you said, from the rear shots that I went to find afterwards, it's completely different. Well, when you look close at him, you 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 don't get the, the the actual true story of what you're looking at in the picture. When you see them in the flesh, it was like you looked at Dorian and you went, "If I touch that, I've got more yeah. more chance of." Bending a, a fucking iron bar. Yeah. <laughs> you looked at you looked at Nasa. You could poke it, and it would be like a bit spodgy. Yeah. Yeah. Got a little yeah. white dot on his chest. There was no density. There yeah. was no the density to the muscle was. It, Dorian was in an, just oh. on another level. All right. Talking about density, John. Quickly before we leave, what's this fucking new thing now? Oh, I'm doing density training. What? You've lost me. I've I'm, 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 I'm missed something here. Uh, so people, guys are saying now here, eh, it's my density day. What, you mean the fucking acting like a dumb cunt? <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> den. Hello. Oh, oh, fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what does it fucking mean? I'm, I'm doing density day. Oh, dear. It just means that they're just probably... Uh, Doing a low set day, heavyweight. Just one of them, innit? It's like, I, I don't even, I'm lost for words. I'm trying to fucking work something out to that one. It's like identity day. The best I'm, thing you can do is just that, what, acting like a complete mong. I Sorry. think they're doing a compound movement for once. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, this is British proof of what we've we've been going over. Complicating yeah. it. Trying to, look, just, everyone's trying to fucking make things sound more complicated. Oh. So that the you know they can sell something, and that unfortunately the the youngsters coming through are, are not hearing what we had to say. And looking back, they're listening to this current crop and this this madness, and they're, and they're going, well, I get it. People say, oh, have you seen such and such on YouTube? And I'm no, no, no. Instagram, no. I said, yeah. why do you want to listen to them? The problem, the problem you've got is John. You know, it's social media and and, and these are. Uh, these outlets, yeah, social media and these outlets, it gives voices to good people, you know, like yourself and, you know, like Dorian and whatever, but it also gives voices to fucking idiots. You know what I mean? And the, and the thing is, the, it's give it, these people create a platform because they're tech savvy and they, they're brought up, so they, they engage in social media and they actually, they love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I've got one for you. Time's going... Yeah, yeah. What, I, want to, what, I want to walk off into the hill. What do you and, think of the uh, the Liver King? Because he's now been ousted, hasn't he? Don't um, even fucking go what? there. Don't oh, even. Oh, I, oh. I swear to God, I could I could get a baseball bat and club the cunt to death. <laughs> I, mean, I could smash the fucker up. He'd be this dressed is... as Fred Flintstone, by the way, with another baseball. <laughs> like an old I swear to God, it, what pissed? No, I'm, I'm I'm really. What annoys me about people like that is they've made an absolute fortune. Yeah. The, and they they are just simply to lie. Yep. You're a, you're an out and out con man. You've lied. Okay, people are gullible enough to breathe him, but you've got young kids, young people looking yep. up at this guy. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what upsets me. And it, it just, when you look at the world as we've discussed today, fake has become the new truth. Lies have become the truth and the truth has become the lies. Yeah. And this is what, it, it literally is a poster boy of what is wrong with modern society. Yeah, this is the problem. We've got too many people fucking making out they're fucking natty, but when they're fucking really not. And then you've got the problem is people like us who speak the fucking truth and people can't handle the fucking truth. Yeah. Exactly. It's the old saying, in it? John 8, 32, <laughs> ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. There you go. Yeah, exactly. And that's a good... Fantastic. Bunch, uh, it's, a great, it. it's a great ending note, that, isn't it? The Sermon of John. I love it. That's the one. Love it. Well, listen, guys, it's been absolutely awesome. Fully enjoyed that episode. I'm sure everyone watching us as well. It's been very explosive, John. entertaining. Great stuff. John, you're a fucking star, mate. Thank yeah. you. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're a legend as well, Zach. Yeah. No, honestly, I'm definitely going to be making a visit to your gym in this new year with me and Kirk will come down. All right, pal? Uh, Any time. Listen, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's help these youngsters out. I've like actually got this Saturday, I've got, got quite a few young members at my gym and I've said, right, Two o'clock till three or four o'clock, and I'm doing a free seminar with my members. I've got That's quite great. a few youngsters, so yeah. time to give back a bit. That's great. That it's good. Yeah, That's yeah, what no. everyone needs. It needs that. It needs good, yeah. solid, proper advice from someone. No, no. Chat people, shit. people like yourself, John. Eh, you need to be out there more, and because you 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 say how it is, and and like I said here, it's it's time to give back a bit to these youngsters because you know what. They're paying for this advice from fucking idiots and they're fucking their bodies up. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, well, yeah, we yeah. can do that. But like I said to Kurt, I'm trying to line something up special yeah. anyway. Yep, yeah. that's and fine. That, that sounds that's good, good as well, mate. That sounds good. Oh. We'll uh, we'll unveil that in time. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah, we're ready where oh. you are on that one, John. Well, um, yeah, leave yeah. it with yeah. Okay, John. Awesome. Take care, brother. Look yeah. after yourself. Thanks, John. Advice. Thanks, Zach. See you soon. See you. Take care, guys. See you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.